let's start investigating what I think it's fair to say is one of the favorite practicals that students that I've worked with have, have done uh, within the biology course. And it's this osmosis practical. So let's go straight into it. I'm not gonna introduce you to all the equipment. It will become obvious as we go. So let's first of all, just jump straight in and look at process one that we're gonna follow. Okay, so process one is using a potato core. I think we've actually got an apple core on here. I'll show you an image of a, of a proper potato core in a second. So using a potato core, core, create six potato cores, ensuring constant surface areas. Remove any skin and cut these cores into five centimeter cylinders. And I should just say about the cylinders, you may find when you're doing this, the guidance you get in your uh, in your classroom or um, on your crib sheet may well be something like three centimeters or four centimeters. It doesn't really matter as long as you follow that guidance. Okay? It's going to be something in that facility. So what is this actually going to look like? Well, here's a nice image of a potato core, removing potato cores. And let's just have a little look at what we end up with. We end up with these potato cores, all of slightly different lengths, of course. You know, this, this one, different length to this one, to this one, for example. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna trim them up. And you can see they've been trimmed up here using either a knife or a scalpel. And you're gonna come up with something which is some kind of uniform length or as close to it as possible. Now it won't be perfect. I'll show you uh, that in a second. And it's ultimately why we use the percentage change uh, as the unit of value. Now, let's look at stage two. In stage two, you're gonna take a syringe and you're gonna add 20 centimeters cubes of six different sucrose solutions, six different su sucrose solutions, six different sucrose solutions. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them into separate boiling tubes uh, and you're gonna label the tubes with the concentration. So it's super important that you label and it's super important that again, you make sure you've got the six different, well, we're using six, you may well use fewer. Uh, I have seen this experiment done with, for example, three uh, different concentrations, okay? But we're gonna make sure that we get that in there. And by the way, you're likely to be stringing a specific amount. We've put 20 centimeters cubed again. I've seen that as little as 10 centimeters cubed in certain practicals, but it's gonna be something in between those numbers. Okay, let's have a look at our third stage. Here we go, we're gonna gently blot the cores with a paper towel to remove excess, excess surface moisture. So let me actually show you an image of this. So here's some uh, actually being done, uh, very recently actually, when I record this video. So what you see here, we're actually blotting this. And the point I would really kind of stress to you about this, and the reason we would do this ultimately, is we just want, so we just want, all we want, <laughs> not for Christmas, we just want mass, we just want mass of core, okay? We don't want the mass of the core plus the mass of the surface moisture. So we're blotting off that surface moisture. So all we're left with is the mass of the core. And that's a really, really important point, okay? Really important point for you, for you to get right. Now, let's carry on. What would we do next and next? Well, let's look at our kind of process four here. Carefully weigh, carefully weigh each core and record its mass, ensuring you record which solution each core goes into. So of course, we're gonna have a solution and a core together, and we need to know the, the sucrose concentration of the solution, and we need to know the exact mass of that core. So we're gonna make sure that we get that right. And of course, look, it's gonna look something like that eventually. And let's keep it going, let's look at the next. We're then gonna leave this for 20 minutes we, so we know which cores in which solution and which concentration. But we're gonna leave it for 20 minutes, make sure you time that. And then we're gonna remove the potato cylinders from the boiling tube. We're gonna blot, we're gonna blot off any excess surface moisture again, so following that same process. And of course, at that point, what are we gonna do is we're gonna start thinking about weighing them, okay? So let's look at process seven, let me just drag down. So process seven, weigh each potato cylinder after it's been in the solution for 20 minutes and record the mass in the results table. I'll show you the results table in a second, so back to our weighing scale. And finally, finally, we're gonna calculate the change in mass. And this is a super important point. If you are calculating the change of mass, okay, so percent, <laughs> what have I done there? Uh, so percentage change, so percentage change in mass, how are we actually gonna calculate that? That is equal to, that is equal to change in value, okay, change in value, or if you like change in mass, change in value over the original value, over the original value, okay? So we're gonna calculate the difference in mass 
the, the change in value, how much it's gone up or down, and we're going to divide that by the original value. And then what we're going to do at the end of that process is we're going to multiply it by 100. And what that's going to give is it's going to give our change in mass, our change in mass, okay, or our percentage change in mass. And super importantly, your results are going to end up looking something along the lines of this. And try to get your table looking like this, please. So again, just emphasizing a couple of points here. What we see here is we've got our different uh, sucrose solutions. And then notice, for example, that in our cells, we have got no units in here. The units are always, the units are always in the headers, okay? Same here. The units are always in the headers. Make sure that's the case. And therefore, you're going to come up with some kind of set of results here. Now, you might just be able to simply look at that data and think, okay, well, you know, at lower concentration, potato mass basically increases here and here. And in higher concentration, sucrose concentrations, the, the the mass of the potato core actually reduces. And you can start making some um, reflections on that, and you can start drawing out some conclusions from that. But what I would like to do is I'd like to take this a bit of a step further, and way, way, way down here somewhere, if I can ever, ever find it, is I've got a big old table of results. That is, a, that is definitely the technical term for what's in front of us. So what have we got here? We've got exactly the same set of results as we had before. Just to be clear, we are only we are only concentrate on one of your original columns, and it's this one. The percentage change in mass is what we are effectively using here. But this time we have got this time we have got one, two, three, four, five groups sets of results. So of course the last column therefore is our mean result from those five groups. Now, what I'd like you guys to do, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video. There's one piece of data in our results here, which we would consider to be an, let me choose a different color, an anomaly, an anomaly, okay? So there's one result in there which could be considered to be an anomaly. It's hard to say that when you're thinking about the things. But what I mean by an anomaly is the, the result is out of place in the context of all of the other results. So I'd like to pause the video and see if you can find that. And I'm assuming you've done that. And if you've done it well, you will have come to the conclusion that the anomalous result was this one. Okay, the anomalous result was this one. At, in all of the groups at 0.8 molarity sucrose solution, we have results which are significantly above minus 10% here. And of course, in group two, we've got something which is significantly less. So therefore, what we might want to do is a good practice here is we might want to remove that anomalous result, which of course changes, which of course changes our mean value for the 0.8 sucrose solution concentration okay so that's sort of good practice now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start plotting these numbers on uh, a graph and i've got the graph sort of set up can i just stress to you guys you know your graph's going to be much more technical and accurate than the graph i'm about to produce i'm effectively hand drawing and sketching this you are going to use a sharp pencil you are going to use a ruler you are going to use graph paper it's going to be absolutely exact in my case it's going to be a little more yeah as i said sketched or hand drawn <music> start plotting our results so let's just go up and let's have a look at our first set of results so at a sucrose solution of zero we have a mean percentage change in mass of plus 11 so let me take a nice dark color like a dark blue and we're going to find here at zero sucrose solution we're going to have a change in mass of plus 11 so somewhere there Okay, so what does that leave us to do? Well, what we'd like to do here is we'd like to find our line of best fit. So there we go, we have our line of best fit. So we, we effectively have, we have two values below the line, two values above the line, and very close to two values on the line. I'm actually quite happy with that uh, as a, as a hand-drawn uh, Example. Now, the point I really want to sort of get to here is this point here, okay, this point here. And I want you to think about what that point represents. Now, the point I would sort of, or the 
really the, the terminology I'd like you to get to is this is what we would call the estimated the estimated concentration the estimated concentration the estimated concentration of sucrose of sucrose in potato why how can is it that we can say that because we can see here that at approximately this point if we have this sucrose solution uh, that the potato core is sitting in we are going to get no change in mass therefore we can describe this as equilibrium okay so th at this point we would have an equilibrium and I really want to stress this it's really important it's a very common question we get no net movement no net movement of water okay so I really encourage you to get that language into your notes and you to be able to use that terminology and by the way we could also say at that point and what have we got there approximately point three we have got in equal concentration in this case of sucrose but uh, sucrose within um, within the sucrose solution and in the potato cells okay so we've got equal concentration and I'm just going to put in and out bear in mind I mean by that inside and outside now final points from me if we were to take this point here, for example, I mean, and, and really anything, anything in, in negative figures, we can describe this as movement, movement of water, movement of water out of cell or out of cells by osmosis. So that is how we represent or how we can describe the reduction in mass of the potato core because it's movement of water out of those cells by os osmosis and finally we can do exactly the same perhaps up at this point up at this point and what we say here is movement movement of water into cell by osmosis and at that point we can consider ourselves done